Hi everybody, this is Ann Emery with Excel for Evaluation. In this video demonstration, I'm going to give you a quick overview of a technique that I use all the time in my work, and that's making automatic data tables using count ifs and drop down menus. I'm not sure if anybody else out there is using this technique, so I wanted to put it out there and just give you a general overview of what I do. And if you like it, and if you'd like to learn more, let me know. Uh, you can comment on my blog or comment on the YouTube channel, and maybe I'll teach a half-day workshop at a conference about it so that you can dive in and, and learn it for yourself. So when I talk about data tables, uh, this is what I mean, the screenshots over to the right. These are question-by-question question, um, uh, tables that break down the percentage of people who selected each response option. This is the type of thing I typically include in an appendix or maybe use as a handout at a meeting or just to have documentation um, showing exactly how people responded. And I do not do these by hand, so I'd like to show you a quick overview of the magic behind the scenes that happens. Here's what the data looks like. This specific survey was about 75 questions long and there are a few hundred responses to it. And if you scroll over, you can see it's just kind of threes and twos and zeros and ones. So uh, pretty standard setup here. And this is what the data tables look like. Um, and I'm going to show you the drop down feature first, and then we'll dive into the count ifs formula. So right now we're looking at data just for community 10. And then if I go up here to my drop down menu, let's look at community 1. And you can see that the data automatically changes. It's kind of semi interactive. Um, this is just here for me so that I can make these tables and then PDF them or print them right away so that I don't have to do any of this at all by hand. You can select community two here. It automatically updates for you. All the tallying and the percentages are done for you. Community three, same thing, it automatically updates. So then what I do is I just save as, and we'll put it on my desktop, and I save it as a PDF. And it's just that fast. So here's my nice two page appendix that I can put at the end of a report. Um, and I just do that, you know, 10 times for each community. You can automate this entire process with VBA code, but that takes a little bit longer to set up. It takes me about, I don't know, 30 minutes or 45 minutes to kind of set up the formulas for this. Um, so it's pretty quick from start to finish. Okay, so what's going on here is that the um, there are some formulas behind the scenes that kind of automatically pull in the data for you. So if you're not familiar with this view in Excel, everything that's white right here is the print preview. That's what gets PDF'd or printed out. And then everything in gray is the back end behind the scenes magic that you need to know about. So uh, let's check out this one right here. This is the count ifs formula. And count ifs is basically filtering or culling down your data for you. So out of that data sheet that we looked at a moment ago, there are kind of three steps to this filtering. So it's looking only in column L, and then only in column O, and then only in column AF. And it's just filtering um, so that I'm only looking at community three, and I'm only looking for community members. Um, that was a demographic question on the survey. There are a couple different roles, and I only want people who fit that description. And then I'm only looking for people who selected strongly agree in the survey. So you can see out of the 39 people total, who responded um, for community three, 22 said strongly agree. So then over here, I just do another step of math. I turn those raw numbers into percentages and I've added a little bit something extra in my formula. I've added a dash. So if 0% uh, of the people selected that response, I just put a dash instead of having 0%. So here's a good example right here. And this just kind of guides the reader's eyes so that they can find at a glance patterns. They're not distracted that by the percentage marks. They can just see that nobody selected this response. So that when you go through all the communities, you can see the general pattern. Like here, everybody selected strongly agree or agree. And then I've also used conditional formatting so that anything above a 50% automatically turns bold and anything below a 50% is just regular text. Just one more thing to kind of guide people's eyes and they can see generally how the responses shook out. So I hope you enjoyed learning about this technique. If you use it yourself, please let me know. Um, and if you'd like to use it, please let me know. Just comment on the YouTube video itself or comment on my blog wherever you happen to be watching the tutorial. Um, and let me know what you thought. So thank you so much.